she wanted to record everything they said so she could remember it. And I said, okay, how? <laughs> I mean, I'm lucky to be able to use an Instamatic. And she said, here, you push the record button and point it in this direction. And that's how we started filming. Please welcome Alana Stewart. What is the difference between a treatment in the U.S. and abroad? Well, I think... In, in Germany and abroad, I can't speak for other countries, okay. but I know in Germany they're doing a lot of things that they're just starting to do here in trials. I mean, they're not strange woo-woo things. Mm. They're things that they're working on mm. here, but some of the medications they're using there haven't been passed here yet, mm. and they're just, uh, a, I think, a little bit ahead. Right. And actually, the German treatment was the most successful treatment. Right. At one point, she was in remission, but then it came back. Right. Do you have any concern that it gives people false hope, thinking, ah, I'll go to Germany and I'll be okay? I've been to Germany many times, and I've seen many patients there that were told they had a month or two here to live. They came there. They were treated. Some of them died. Some of them got a lot longer time to live. Some of them lived. Well, if ever there was a shining example of friendship, it's you, Alana. And oh, you can you. read about this. Everybody in our audience is going home with a copy of Alana's book. It is called My Journey with Star, and we'll be right back. Who's now a close friend of Ms. Fawcett, Alana Stewart, who has written a book called My Journey with Farrah. Now, uh, some people have accused you of exploiting the relationship. You know about that. Um, I think that's unfair. I mean, if you knew her and Thank you're a you. friend and you want to write the book and set the record straight, I mean, that seems to be a compliment to your friend. I would do the same thing. Well, you know, first of all, they were my diaries of when we were together during the, especially during the two years that we were in Germany. And it was actually her idea for me to write the book. I gave her this little book about friendship. It was in German. And she said, you know, you should write a book like this about us. And she read a lot of my diaries. I, it's not like I rushed out and wrote a book, you know, the, the diaries were there. And I wanted to do something that was a tribute not only to her courage, but to, to further her message. Yeah. I mean, she did a lot, you know. She started a foundation. The more I can help keep her memory and her legacy alive, I'm really happy to. And I'll say one thing. Anybody who knows me well and knows her well, they know why I was with her and why I did what I did. I did it for the right reasons, because she was like my sister, and I loved her with all my heart. Ms. Stewart, thanks for coming in here. We appreciate it very much. <laughs> Look, you know, it is what it is, America. We're back. Alana Stewart is here. Because I heard you talking about that crock pot of black eyed peas. Yeah. <laughs> and my mouth started to water. Do you I, eat ham hock? I, I don't eat ham hock. I make it with smoked turkey. Okay, yeah. You know, that, I'm that, the healthy one. I was right? going to say, that's really the politically correct way of but doing things. But my grandmother did it with slabs of bacon. Yes, yeah, Grandma yeah, yeah, knew. Yeah, and chitlins. Boy, you know, she, she knew how to, uh, honey. <laughs> Texas. Honey, okay, please, okay. please, 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 please. <laughs> Chicken and dumplings. So, <laughs> wow. Cornbread, turnip greens. All that. Pot liquor. <laughs> pot liquor? Pot liquor. What do you know about pot liquor, Alana I'm, Stewart? I'm a Texas girl, and we lived in the country, and we had an outdoor toilet, and we lived on the back roads. Please. Well, I, you've come a long, long way. She had a great sense of humor, and in the darkest of times, she laughed, and, and you know. Like when she caught you coming in late oh my night God, from yes. staying out oh. all night with the German man? Yes. Oh, my God. She was doing but, her perp walk, thought she was getting past Farrah's room. Yeah, I was sneaking into my room, and I hear this voice call out from the, we were in this little town called Tegensy, where the Lake Tegensy, and I hear this voice call out from the adjoining room, well, the slut of Tegensy is back. <laughs> such great stories. This she is called such... me that the rest of the trip, and then she would, like, mess her hair up, and she would come stumbling into the room and pretend to be me. Yeah. <laughs> Alana, good morning to you. Good morning, Meredith. It's good to see it's you. It's really good to see you as well. This... You wrote, do you talk to a person about dying? Do you tell them not to be afraid, or do you just pretend everything is fine? What did you conclude about your role as a friend at a time like that? I just concluded that I just needed to be there because I really didn't know what to say. You know, I didn't really want to. I could tell sometimes she was frightened, and I didn't know whether to address it and say, no, come on, you're going to make it, um, or just step back and, and let her make her decision if she wanted to keep fighting or not. Did you have a chance to say 
your goodbyes to Farah? I did. I did. I told her how much I loved her and um, that she was like a sister to me and she looked up at me and she said more than a sister. You describe her as your soul sister actually in the book. Yeah, I mean I really believe that. I believe that we came into this life to go on this journey together because it's radically changed my life. Alana Stewart, such a pleasure Thank to you. see you. Thank again. you, Mary. Sorry Day. for your loss. Thank you. Are you still nutty about, you know, when you fly, what plane you get on, where you are you still mm -hmm. not as much as I used to be because you know something else that I learned from this experience is that life can change in yeah, a heartbeat and we better it, enjoy yeah. every day yeah. that we have and love everybody in your life just cherish the people well, that okay, you and care your, about. And your um, son, who's someone in your oh, life that you love, son. is going to do Dancing with the Stars. I can't believe that Ashley's going to do Dancing with the Stars. And I pray to God he has George's dancing genes, because <laughs> if he has mine, oh, he is screwed. Like <laughs> well, this is, a, this is, this well is every reason why you should do it next year. Oh, my God. The whole family. It, it would be, kill me. No, remember, <laughs> clutches do well, because if you start badly. OK, who said she's a clutch? She did. I she have did. two left feet. Yeah. I promise you. She's just you. said it. Oh, yeah. A documentary shot by her longtime, very close friend, Alana Stewart, who traveled the world alongside Fawcett, searching for a cure. Well, now uh, Alana Stewart is sharing her memories right out of her own diaries in this new book, My Journey with Farah, a story of life, love, and friendship. And she is joining us tonight to tell us some of her stories. And you're also really honest in this book about sort of what you struggled with and, and how you talk about this, uh, how you talk to someone who has cancer. Well, I think anyone who is friends with or a parent of or a loved one, a mate of anyone struggling with a terminal disease, whether it be cancer or anything else, I think that um, you go through a whole uh, emotional roller coaster yourself and there's a lot of uncertainty. I mean, there were times that I was terrified, I was frightened, I was uncertain, I didn't know if I was doing the right thing or saying the right thing and yet you have to be strong for that person. I mean, Farah was very strong and very determined and had incredible courage and she kind of brought out my courage. I mean, I found an inner strength that I never knew I had. You know, I used to like faint at the sight of a hangnail and <laughs> I found this in incredible strength within me that I think, you know, comes from a higher power. Finally, I, I just got to ask you, because one of the things I loved is, is you write a lot about food <laughs> in this book. <laughs> I mean, you, you guys spend a lot of time cooking together, and I think a lot of us think, oh, they're Hollywood stars, they've got cooks and chefs, and they was like, no, you were in the kitchen a lot. No, well, neither one of us had cooks or chefs. We love to cook, and we're both from Texas, and I think that's how we bonded in the first yeah. place. And there's nothing that made us happier than staying home on Christmas Eve making pecan pies <laughs> and are going to some Tex-Mex joint and having Tex-Mex yeah. food. And we truly did love to eat, and we love to cook. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fascinating read. Alana Stewart, I appreciate you coming on and sharing Thank your stories you. with Thank us. Thank you so much. All right, Ladies well, and gentlemen, please welcome Alana Stewart. Alana, so good to have you here. So good to be here. Thank you very Thank much. You. This is a very, very touching story of two bonded friends. Tell me why you did the documentary and the book. Well, the documentary was originally not meant to be a documentary. Uh, we were in Germany when we first got there. Farah handed me her little handheld camera and said, here, will you film this doctor's meeting so I can remember what they say? And I said, I don't know how to film anything. <laughs> and she showed me. She said, it's really easy. And so we started filming it all just to document uh, for her, for, so that she could remember things. Uh, and at the same time, she created a foundation, the Farrah Fawcett Foundation for Cancer Research, and part of the proceeds of the book are going to go there. It was a very important cause to her. You know, if she was going to have cancer, she decided she was going to use it to help people, and she did. More with uh, Alana Wright when we come back.